Wow, Rust is almost two times as fast. Alright, so if you have been following this channel, by now you might have already know that I started learning Rust recently and I think it is slowly winning me over. Yeah, and here's why. Alright, so in addition to being the most beloved language right, for seven years, right, consecutive on Stack Overflow, right, Rust is also much faster and performant as compared to say Node.js, right? But don't take my word for it. Let's put it to the test, yeah? So over here, we have a simple main.ts TypeScript file where we have a simple function that generates a random string and a heavy function that uh, loops through for 1 million times and we just push or add to an array of strings, right? And each time we get 7 characters for that string. So we do this about 1 million times and then we measure how long it takes to do that. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing in Rust as well. So if we take a look at this Rust version, okay, it's basically the same thing. We have a heavy function okay, where we're looping through 1 million times. Same thing. Okay, we have a vector of strings and then we are just generating a random string of 7 characters and adding or pushing it to our vector yeah, for 1 million times. And then we are just benchmarking yeah, how long this takes. Yeah, so let's jump over to our terminal to see the benchmarks. Yeah. All right, so we're going to run these two examples, right? The Rust and the TypeScript example and compare the benchmarks. Yeah, so let's jump over to terminal. All right, so this is the TypeScript version. So we'll start with the TypeScript version first. Okay, we'll do right npx ts node main dot ts and see how long it takes to push 1 million strings to an array all right shouldn't take long okay so that's around 228 milliseconds uh, 1000 milliseconds is about one second so this is around 0 0.2 seconds okay let's run it a few more times okay so that's around 221 milliseconds, 219 milliseconds, 221 milliseconds, right? So I will say on average, it is around from 219 to 228 milliseconds. Yeah. I mean the range. Yeah. All right. Let's check out our Rust version. All right. So with our Rust version, we will say cargo run release yeah let's see how long this takes yeah so that's around 109 milliseconds yeah so once again 1000 milliseconds is one second so this is around 0 0.1 seconds yeah i'll run this a few more times you can see that wow rust is almost two times as fast as compared to node.js and in this scenario typescript yeah that's insane yeah yeah i can keep running this you can see that Right, it's around right, 102 to 103 milliseconds. Yeah, so that's around 0 0.1. Yeah, more or less 0 0.1 seconds. Yeah, to add 1 million strings. Yeah, to a vector. Yeah, that's insane, man. That's insane how fast this is. Yeah, all right. You might argue that the speed of iteration is faster when you're using uh, TypeScript or JavaScript based frameworks, for example, such as React. Solid JS, Svelte, and etc. Okay, but if we were to be honest, right, your users do not care what stack you are using, right? They just want things to be fast, to work, and to be reliable. Yeah. So always remember that your user experience is more important as compared to your developer experience, right? So when you think from a perspective where speed of iteration is more important, yeah, you have to sacrifice right a little bit of developer experience yeah for better user experience and in this case faster performance right say if you want to compare rust to node.js and typescript yeah so always try to think from a user's perspective yeah 
Or at least that's how I think. Yeah. All right. Another reason why I think Russ is slowly winning me over is due to its super strong type system. Yeah. So for example, take a look at this example we have over here. Okay. Here we have a very simple function that takes a string, right, and returns a string with another string concatenated with it. Yeah. And then in the main function here, yeah, we're just calling that function right by passing in a simple hello string and printing it. Yeah. So if we go to the terminal now to run it, uh, let's say cargo run, right? You just print out a simple hello world. Yeah. Okay. Let's clear that and let's go back to VS Code. Alright, so watch what happens if we pass in, instead of string, we pass in a number. Save that. Okay, and you notice that right off the bat, it already throws an error, right? It tells us that, hey, this is not a string. Okay, and if we try to run this Rust program, right? Let's go back to the terminal again. And if we try to run this, yeah, you see that the compiler throws an error. Yeah, so you will not be able to even compile, uh, not to mention running this. Yeah, because it, it says here, right, expected string, but we found an integer. Yeah, so if we try to build it, right, same thing. Yeah, same error. Yeah, so this is one advantage of using Rust because you will be able to resolve a lot of errors, right, uh, via the compiler. In layman terms, right, you will remove, right, you would have already remove a lot of possible errors uh, by the time your, for example, your app is up and running. Uh, so compare that with, say, uh, TypeScript or Node.js where you might get, you might only get those errors in runtime. Yeah. All right, which leads us to our next point. So Rust also comes with a package manager. So if you come from a web development point of view or background, right? This will really feel at home. Yeah, so Rust has a package manager called Cargo, right? Similar to NPM, and it also has a public packages registry called crates.io, right? And anyone can easily publish their code as a crate to it. Yeah, so for example, here we are in our terminal, right? If you want to add a package, say we can say Cargo add ren, for example, yeah, ren is what you use for generating random stuff. Yeah. Okay, and say for example, if you want to build the runs code that we have been writing, we call cargo build. Yeah. So obviously we are in the same project, so that's why we still have the same error. Or if you want to run it, you can go you can call cargo run. Yeah. Okay, let's clear that. And if we want to create a new Rust project, we can say cargo new Rust new project. Yeah. So if we take a look inside what is created here, uh, let me just clear that. LS minus. Okay. Yeah. So you'll see it creates a cargo dot tom. Uh, let's take a look at what it looks like in VS Code. All right. All right, so here we are in VS Code with our newly created Rust project, right? So by default, it generates a main.rs with your main function, okay? And it also generates a cargo.tom. Yeah, so think of this as your package.json. Yeah, it's quite similar. Uh, this is why I say that it really feels at home. All right, not to mention that Rust also comes with great documentation and there are a lot of resources for you to learn online. Yeah, so for example, let's take a look at this website. So right now, right now I'm using this, right, doc.rust-lang.org. Yeah, I will share the link in the pin or the description box below. Yeah, so right now this is what I'm using to learn Rust. Yeah, and I think it is a very good resource yeah so right now i am at chapter 16 regarding uh trading and concurrency yeah okay but i do think that this is a good starting point all right rust is also well known to be a low level systems programming language okay but in recent years right that has changed a lot as right now 
uh, it is opening up to a whole different group of developers. For example, if you are coming from a web development background, okay, for back end development, right, there are things like Actix Web and Axum, yeah, for you to use uh, for your back end framework. And in terms of front end, if you are more familiar with React, so you can consider Diosis, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, or even Laptos, right? Laptos is more similar to SolidJS. Yeah, if you are looking for that fine green reactivity. Yeah, and if you are looking for native uh, GUI development, okay, you can consider things like eGUI, yeah, to develop GUI or GUI applications in pure Rust. Yeah, so there are a lot of very popular and uh, good frameworks out there, yeah. So that extends on React Rust, yeah. All right. So coming from a background many years ago, where I started programming, when I started first learning programming with uh, Visual Basic and then C, C plus plus and then Java, okay, and then moving to things like PHP, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, yeah and so on. It really feels like I have come full circle uh, by starting to learn Rust. Yeah. And for me personally, it feels really satisfying. And I think this will make me more competitive in the future job market as well. Yeah. So what do you think? Do you think Rust is interesting? Right. Would you pick it up? Right. Let us know in the comments below. And as usual, like and subscribe to our channel to show us that you like this type of content and uh, let us know in the comments below again, right? What type of other content you would like to see as well. Okay, but as always, stay awesome and stay safe. Cheers, man.